I'm really excited to talk to you this week about that ecosystem we love or lament or, or both. You've seen videos which talk about the products and hardware analysis on Apple Watch or iPhone being the gateway to Apple addiction, blinding us to the much ballyhooed Apple tax. But I really want to take a practical look at what it is that locks so many of us in. You know, where the rubber meets the road or, or, or stair climbing. My heart is definitely in this, and I know many of you might say the same. So let's discuss Apple's ecosystem through a little project I'm calling Apple for Life. And I, I know, I know, if that sounds too much like hyperbole, a little corny, hold on tight. I'll make it make sense. I don't live to tech. I use tech to help me live. It's a tool, thus Apple for Life. So this started out as me doing a getting fit for summer piece, but that's kind of like yo-yo dieting. It isn't sustainable, and the longer outlook is better for you over the long haul. Life is a marathon, not a sprint, right? So you want to get metabolically fit and stay that way. Metabolically fit, meaning what you look like on the inside is more important than what societal standard you meet on the outside. In order to do that, you might need to do some planning and maybe some research. Check. You want to track and keep up with your progress to ensure what you're doing is actually working. Check. You need something mobile so that you can keep things light if you choose to go for a fast walk, a, a jog, or, or want to jump rope. Check. Apple's ecosystem has you covered on all fronts, and I'm gonna walk you through how I use it all. The hardware, my favorite fitness apps, some third-party connections, all of it. Let's get into it. Now, a portion of this is gonna be a diversion from my usual pieces. This is gonna be part review, part vlog. I'm gonna try to walk you through things as I use them, so some of this will cover right here in the studio, and some of it's gonna take place inside the gym. Matter of fact, I'm on my lunch break and headed there right now, but back inside the studio. Let's take a look first at the hub of it all, the product which accounts for Apple's largest sales according to Bloomberg, the iPhone. This is the Alpine green iPhone 13 Pro Max with the green silicone case, though the good news is what I'm going to show you here works on every recent iOS device on down to the SE. Now, while a lot of tech reviews tend to focus on apps like Strava or Runtastic, maybe even Nike Run, I see a lot of people out there hitting the iron. You see it all over IG or TikTok. Women want those booty or glute gains. Dudes want arms that look nice in a t-shirt or short sleeve button down. But how do you get that? One very effective route to go is resistance training, moving some weight. For me, that means progressive overload or lifting a bit heavier each session, set, week, month, whatever works for you. My favorite iOS and watchOS app to help me with that is called Strong. Now, I had to take a break when the pandemic hit because, you know, gym shut down and that was kind of my thing. So I'm gonna be sharing some data and graphs from 2020. I'm now back in the gym, but I'm working back up to the connective tissue strength and, and muscle strength I'll need to get through some of those workouts I was doing. So not a whole lot of chart data at the moment. Strong is a workout journal, but so fully featured, it is so much more than that. First, you can use it free and get access to some workout templates and some charts. The depth of features here require a view all its own to fully explore this app, but the high level overview is that you can create a workout and start it, then have rest timers between sets, change weights and reps on the fly during a workout, and it all syncs back to Apple Health. After a period of time, you'll be able to look at chart data, showing your progress over time, even giving you estimates of your one rep max based on how much you've been lifting. But as we talk about Apple and its ecosystem, it's really the watch component, the Apple watch component of this iPhone app, which has me in love. I do pay for the pro version so that I can create unlimited workout templates and access all the charts available to me, but being able to create all of that on my phone then leave my phone at home or at work while I go across the street to the gym is worth its weight in gold. The watch app never gets in my way 
follows Apple's watchOS design language and has a short learning curve. Sidebar, I'm an LA Fitness member and their iOS app also has an Apple Watch companion app which lets me leave the key tag and the phone behind and check in with my watch. No need to download anything to Apple Wallet or screenshot a membership card's barcode. Of course, the Apple Watch will take care of your standard cardio, and it has a really good built-in interval timer for workouts, but my favorite app is actually one called Seconds. Seconds has uh, timers that you can program, that you can customize. Um, you can set it so that it, it does all kinds of things for boxing workouts, for jump rope workouts. It has all kinds of bells and, and different sounds you can use. It's, it's very customizable. And that's the one I use for, like I said, my boxing days or my jump rope days. But on the days that I don the gloves, the watch just doesn't do it. I don't really like wearing it high up on my forearm because it's a little bit uncomfortable. So for that, I have a Polar H10 chest strap that will connect to either the watch or my phone via Bluetooth. Obviously, I use it for the phone in this case when I'm uh, recording and working out on the bag using the Seconds Timer app. In this case, I use it connected to my iPhone and then set seconds to two minute rounds with a one minute rest, five rounds for a total 14 minute workout. For both my boxing workout and jump rope, all data, heart rates, etc., is synced back to Apple Health. So not using my Apple Watch or Apple's native workout app doesn't penalize me in terms of keeping my health logging consistent. And this is another app which deserves its own review because the amount of granularity with the timers, timer countdown settings, sound settings and sources is phenomenal. And I honestly don't feel like doing all this each time I head out, but music definitely makes it easier. So I rely on it heavily to get that work in. And right now, Beats Fit Pro are my earbuds of choice for working out replacing my old favorites, the Powerbeats Pro, because they don't budge no matter how dynamic my activity, like the Powerbeats Pro. But now I get active noise canceling. What's great about them is that once I've connected them to any one of my iCloud connected Apple devices, they show up as a connected device on the others. And more importantly, I can control their functions directly from the phone or my watch. In this case, I have the buds set so that I can control volume directly from them. And if I need to go active noise canceling because the gym bros or giga chads are getting too loud when they miss a rep or set, I can just hit the watch and turn that active noise canceling on. With non-Apple Buds, that's probably the biggest missing piece is that ability to control all the functions from the watch itself. But moving on to the next puzzle piece in my connected health ecosystem, the rest of this, I'm gonna bring in the most important aspect of this exercising, and that is rest and recovery, as you can see here. People have massage guns now, Yes, I bought one on a day when it was on a deep sale, deep discount, and I do love it. In addition to that, I have foam rollers and occasionally I get a massage, but all of that is extra, unnecessary, but nice if you have it in the budget. But if you actually take the time to stretch, scientifically speaking, research shows that it does more for your recovery than all of those things. And for me, Part of that is using the yoga workout on my watch and just doing some basic stretches on my own. And the other part of it is using my Apple Fitness Plus subscription and their yoga and Pilates workouts. Yoga with Janelle is a treat and having done Pilates and always been the only guy in the room, Pilates with Daryl is a refreshing change. And the connections between watch OS and TV OS are everything, unlike me, I'm terrible at yoga, everything just works. My dad is right there on the screen, no need to glance at my watch, and I really like the trainers Apple has selected. They look like all of us. And I actually like the playlist they curate, which I can download to my iOS and watchOS devices to listen to outside of the workouts. Yeah, that ecosystem. Apple Music subscription required for that, by the way. After a good stretch, it's time to get to bed. Now. This is the main area where I'd actually like to see more from Apple. 
I want to see how rest affects my recovery and my body's readiness to get after it again the next day or not. With Apple Watch, I get heart rate and breathing rates for sleep data, along with a couple other data points, but I'd love to see sleep stage info and of course that HRV data used to help determine, along with sleep data, how ready my body is to be tortured again. Products from Garmin and Fitbit offer this already, both free and with a subscription. For detailed sleep data though, no worries because AutoSleep is a beautiful app which provides sleep stage info and is one of the most beautifully designed watch OS apps I've used. It follows the circular watch OS design language with an aesthetic that is bright, easily readable, and feels consistent with the rest of the watch experience. And best of all, it has my favorite feature which I'd also like to see added to Apple Watch and that is smart alarms. Basically, an alarm which wakes you according to your sleep cycle. When implemented properly, this has worked very well for me on other platforms. The watch wakes you within 30 minutes or so of your desired wake up time based on when you're in a light sleep cycle. I've found I wake up less groggy when I use this. And I don't know if that's the placebo effect or if it's really working, but I can tell you that I've been using this for years and that it would be a long standing placebo effect if it isn't actually effective, but I'll take it either way. Now, we all may have data points which are most important to us, but for me, after accumulating all this data, I'm coming back to the hub, which is my phone. The two most important metrics for me are VO2 max and heart rate variability in the Apple Health app. I have type two diabetes and that makes me a higher risk for coronary issues. So making sure my ticker is strong is very important. And thanks to COVID and a sedentary job, my cardio fitness is lacking, but I'm working on it. And this helps me track that progress. And at the end of the day, that's what's most important. Not the tech itself, but what the tech enables. And just like any ecosystem, whether it's a rainforest, a reef, your body or your gadgets, it's important that all the individual parts make the whole better because when one part dies or stops pulling its weight, you wind up having to overcompensate in other areas. And with tech, that may not be as catastrophic as it would be in a rainforest, but if I'm spending hard-earned money, I don't want to have to rig things and try to fit square pegs into my program to make things work. My own personal story, I was a die-hard Galaxy Note fan until the iPhone 10 and Apple Watch Series 3. I'm a big phone guy and the combination of testing the Series 3 with a phone which finally fit my size preference from Apple, the, the watch was the final piece I needed to get me to switch and make Apple my overall ecosystem of choice. Now I'm going to finish all this up, all this shooting and all the footage I'm gathering and collecting here for this and, and then I'm going to edit it all on my iMac Pro here and when I'm done I'm going to export a tease to you know get y'all to watch this piece by airdropping it to my iPhone after I've cut it in Premiere Pro. Then I'm going to post that to my IG and my Twitter feeds. I'll see you all there. And if you have any questions about this piece, about the ecosystem, about fitness apps, about anything I've talked about, please feel free to leave those in the comments, constructive criticism too, sure, or hit me on IG or Twitter. I love chatting with you all. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.